the channel. I'm excited for this event today because it's the win $1,600 mystery bounty. If you guys haven't heard of it, it's been on social media in the past where on day two, if you've made it, you're in the money and whoever you bust out, you get a bounty voucher and you can take that voucher up to the front and draw for a mystery bounty. They range from, I think, $500 all the way up to 100,000 for the biggest bounty in the prize pool. I'm not sure if that's what it's gonna be like for this tournament. Maybe the top one will be something like 50,000. Today is day one A of three day ones. Let's just jump in there and play some poker. The win is guaranteeing $1.5 million in this prize pool, but I have a feeling it's gonna blow that out of the water. This tournament is the first one of the win million series, so a lot of people are in town. But like I said, the real fun starts on day two when all of those bounties come into play. This is my first mystery bounty. I've never played this before, so I'm really excited to play. We start with 30,000 in chips, 40 minute levels. Let's get going. First hand of the tournament, we open eight seven of clubs and cut off to 600. Small blind, three bets to 2K, and I make the call. Right away, involved in a three bet pot. Flop comes down 644 four with two spades and a heart. The small blind continues for 1600, so a little more than third of the pot. And with two overs that I think are live and a gutter, I make the call. The turn is an offsuit 10, and the opponent barrels again this time for a little more closer to half pot 3500 so at first the 10 looks like a good card for me but i'm worried at this point that a five or a nine of spades is actually a dirty out and i am sitting here with eight high so i make a discipline laid out on this turn i could be convinced that i either should have raised the flop or should peel again on this turn and try to bluff him on the river i made a pretty snug fold and move on to the next hand just a few hands later, under the gun raises to 500. Under the gun one makes the call, and now I'm in the low jack with pocket tens. We're all three in the earliest positions at the table, so we should have the tightest range, the narrowest range. But with pocket tens, I don't wanna just call and then have you know two other people come into the pot. So I decided to squeeze and either get it heads up or at least isolate it to just us three in the pot. I make it 2000 to go and both opponents make the call. A big three way, three bet pot brewing here. The flop comes down queen, queen, four, rainbow. Both guys check it over to me. And on this flop, I could see betting small or checking, you know, both being pretty good. But with pocket tens, I prefer betting small because they are so vulnerable to overcards. I didn't do that in game though. I just checked it back. I think it's okay, but I would prefer a bet. On the turn, it comes a deuce of spades. So a backdoor flush draw comes in. And this time under the gun takes the lead and bets 3,300, about half the pot. Under the gun one, then calls 3,300. I'm not gonna lie, I started to get a little nervous here that one of them had a queen, but for half pot, I'm in position. I have pocket tens. I think I have to call this one and then see what happens on the river. But again, now looking back on it, that's what I think I should do. But in game, you guys, I made the nittiest freaking fold of all time. And I just folded my tens. <sighs> I have no excuse for this. If I could defend myself, it's I was worried about A, somebody having a queen. They could easily slow play this. They'd both play it like this. And B, a lot of river cards are gonna be questionable for me, such as a spade or an over card to my tens. And that's a lot of the deck. So that's what was going through my head when I made the fold. But the counter to that is that I'm in position. I get to see what they do on a river. So even if those bad rivers come off, I don't know about you guys in your experience, but in multi-way pots, after somebody gets called in multiple spots, I feel like people play the next street kind of straightforward. And so, yeah, I should have just taken an extra second to think about the counter argument to my fears <laughs> and made the call and just worried about it, like cross that bridge when we got there on the river. These are the mistakes that I tend to make early on in the tournament or after a long break. And I love showing them to you guys because you know, you're not alone. It's okay to show your mistakes. That's how you grow and talk about them. But I wish I would have made the call in game. That being said, now that the footage has played out, I kept the camera rolling so that you could see what they ended up having. And as you could see, I would have won the hand. Under the gun had pocket eights. Under the gun one had pocket nines. So it would have been the dream scenario. I would have scooped a huge pot and now I have to collect myself for the next you know, few levels or as long as it takes for me to mentally regroup. I'm not just thinking about what could have been because it's already in the past. I just have to move on to the next hand. 
And right after that, we pick up pocket kings on the button. I raise to 600 and just the big blind comes along. The flop comes out, jack nine, eight, all clubs. Not a great start for me. Big blind checks. And even though it doesn't look great, I still want to put some money in right here and now to charge the one club hands he has and the pair plus straight draws that he has. So I bet 1,000 into 1,500 and he quickly makes the call. Turn comes, queen of diamonds. <laughs> Pretty miserable for me. Now the straight gets there. He could have two pairs at this point. And he knows that. He knows I'm probably not going to like this card. So he leads 3,000 into 3,500. Shaking my head, a little bit of a sigh and make the fold. So far, it's been a pretty lousy start. Can we get some momentum? Look down at Ace King and I hope so. I raise it up to 700 under the gun, button and small blind come along. Three ways to a flop. The dealer puts out seven, three deuce with two diamonds. So I have the king of diamonds. Small blind checks to me. I bet 700 on accident. I was gonna make it 900, but I don't know. I was doing some math in my head, picked the wrong number and put out 700. The button is unimpressed and raises to 2,500. I always feel really just lost in these spots. When small blind folds, I end up folding as well. I could definitely peel one off here and see how it goes, but this player in particular, it it's only been a few minutes, so I can't just like make these broad sweeping assumptions, but in game, you just have to use the info that you had. And my only info on him was that he was going for it. So this might not have been the only aggression that I faced. Doesn't really matter if I'm gonna be betting a lot of hands on this flop. Ace King is really high up in there and I should probably float on the flop. Not gonna lie, starting to question my life choices at this point, but the action is not slowing down. Under the gun one opens to 700 and I look down at king nine of diamonds in the hijack. Definitely gonna three bet this one, so I make it 2100 and he makes the call. So heads up, flop comes down, queen, jack, four, two diamonds. Whew, finally, a beautiful flop, perfect for our hands. He checks it over to me, I see bet. 2000 and he pretty quickly folds. So finally we take down a tiny little pot, momentum swinging in our direction before we go on our first break. So I'm not gonna lie, those hands like that tens fold, sometimes my brain gets a little fixated on my mistakes. You know, I've realized that just fixating on your past mistakes is only gonna make you make more mistakes. <laughs> At least that's what happens to me personally. So going forward, this is what I'm gonna try to do. I, I tried it a little bit in that last level, but I want to focus on having a running dialogue in my head, just sort of like a conscious stream of narration almost, like narrating the hand that's going on, even if I'm not in it. That way it just keeps me grounded in the moment and I can make the best decision going forward. At the same time, it's gonna help me collect info on my opponents. So that's the plan going forward. And then hopefully I won't be making as many mistakes as that one. Good luck us. Poker is hard, you guys. Sometimes you need to have a little personal pep talk on break. It's not gonna get easier because my friend Joey Weissman comes to the table. He is a very talented player, plays all the big stuff and that's our opponent in this hand. I raise it up to 1K in the hijack with pocket eights. Joey makes the call on the big blind and the flop comes down a six, three rainbow. He checks it to me. I see about small, I see about a thousand. He goes after me, he raises to 3,000. So I don't mind my C bet. I like betting pairs like just over the second card, especially when there's so much distance between that card and the high card. So in this case, between a six and an ace, there's all these cards that he could hit if he had two cards in between those. So my pocket eight's pretty vulnerable. I don't mind my C bet. Plus, obviously I get value from his six X and his three X holdings. Now that he raises me, what is he doing this with? I can see him doing this with gutters with uh, you know four or five for an open ender, with some, something with a four or five in it. I think I'm beating enough of the stuff that he would do this with as a bluff that I make the call. The turn comes a deuce of clubs, bringing it back door flush draw. And he continues for a little bit smaller size than the flop. He bets 2,800. So I go into the tank because yes, this completes the straight, the four or five, but what I'm mainly worried about is his river aggression. So if I call this turn, he bet, I don't know if he notices, he bet exactly half pot, which I know he realized, but I don't know if he noticed that he bet a size where if I call this bet on the turn, the pot on the river is gonna be exactly my remaining stack size. So he would have a pot size shove on the river. Knowing Joey, he's not a folder and he does not give up. So 
I think that even though this bed is smaller, it looks like he's setting up a pot sized jam on the river. That's what was going through my head. And you know, he could still have ace X, he could still have two pair. He has ace three, ace six, six three. He also has ace deuce that he might raise the flop with. He might just triple barrel with all of his five X, all those gutters that he raised on the flop. So I don't know. I felt like he was just gonna go for it too often. So I made the fold. Not a lot of easy decisions so far in this tournament. Poker is hard, guys. Poker is hard. Two hands later, I get ace king again and make it 1K from under the gun one. Just the big blind comes along on queen, jack, deuce, two clubs. I see bet 1700 and big blind makes the fold. I only include this hand because I want to show I was winning some tiny, tiny pots, but they were tiny. They were just the big blind. But you know, that happens. Sometimes you win the small ones and lose the big ones. Blinds are creeping up and my stack is creeping way down. <laughs> this one button opens to 1100 and I peel the big blind with pocket fives. Flop comes down ace, ace, three, rainbow. So I'm liking this flop. It's nice uh, for my hand. The button has a wide range, so it doesn't always have to have an ace and having a pair on this board stands to be the best hand. So when I check it over to him and he only bets 700, I happily make the call. The turn comes down a 10 of clubs. Immediately, I think that when I check it to him, he's gonna barrel his card a lot because he's gonna barrel broadways, he's gonna barrel backdoor flush draws, and obviously he's gonna barrel an ace that beats us and maybe even some 10X. In my head, I was like, okay, I think that I'm just gonna be calling this turn all the time. And that's what I do. He bets 2,600, decent size, and I make the call. I had seen him do this a lot, even with bluff. So I was pretty confident that I was ahead enough on this turn to make this call. The problem is with this thinking is that I'm out of position. And a lot of those river cards that um, complete the hands that he's double barreling, I'm gonna be guessing on. So he can bluff me when there's a club on the river, let's say, or if there's any Broadway card that hits the river, he can bluff on a lot of those cards, even if he doesn't actually hit. So being out of position, I think, makes this a fold. And if I was in position, if I was button and he was hijacked, for example, maybe that would turn it into a call. But being out of position, having to guess on the river with a big size on this turn, I think I should be folding this one. <laughs> so I'm, I'm laying down all the ones I should be calling and I'm calling the ones I should be laying down. It's just, you know, upside down day for me. All right, back to the action. I made the call on the turn. The river is a four of clubs, brings the back door flush. And when I check it to him, he jams it all in for the remainder of my stack, which is slightly over pot. I can't really call here. So I fold and move on to the next one. So the very next hand, it folds around to me in the small blind. Not gonna lie, my confidence is at an all time low right now so far in this tournament, but blind versus blind, I'm even playing a lot of hands. So I flick in the call and the big blind checks behind. Flop comes down king, jack, deuce, rainbow looking pretty meager for us. So I just flick in a 500 bet and see what he does. He makes the call and the turn brings a seven of hearts. So we turn it to gutter, but that's about it. And now is my decision time. Am I gonna empty the clip and go for it? Am I gonna shut it down now? What do I think he has that he will fold? And I decide, yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. So I bet 2000 and he makes the call. Now, if I was playing really sharp and really paying attention and taking my time with my decision, I definitely would have sized up here on the turn so that the river wasn't so awkward when I did decide to go for it and jam. But in, in the moment, I only made it 2000, just something for me to pay attention to going forward. And we're off to see a river, which comes the miracle, nine of diamonds. Ah! So we river our gutter, it feels so good. And now I've set up this bet size a little awkwardly, but with 6,500 in there, with 8,500 in my stack, I jam all in and just pray for a call. He goes into the tank, he thinks for a really long time. Eventually he decides to make the fold. So we don't get that full double up, but happy to at least have gotten there in one pot and got lucky on him. Now it's time for second break. All right, so things didn't really go too well those last few levels. We're down to 11 big blinds going back. So fingers crossed that we can spin it up. If not, I'm gonna hop into the two five and play some cash. Good luck us. 30 minutes goes by before I find my first jam spot. I pick up ace four of hearts in the low jack. I have slightly more than nine big blinds. Big blind tosses in the call, no question. And he has pocket jack. So we're gonna need to get really lucky in this one. 
Ever since I got short, my neighbor has been teasing me that when I finally find a spot, it's gonna be glorious. And he was right. We get the full double and now we have some life. So I have enough chips in my stack to finally do something other than go all in. So when I look down at Pocket Kings under the gun with a stack size around 14 big blinds, I raise it up to 2K. Just the button comes along and, you know, it kind of flashes through my mind that this guy has been playing with me a lot. I wonder if he's coming after me in particular. <laughs> it could just be that I always raise and he's on the button. I don't know. Anyway, the flop comes down, jack seven deuce, two spades, we're heads up. I have the king of spades, so I'm loving this flop. I see bet 2K and he pretty quickly calls. The turn is another seven. So not our favorite card, but we are going with it. Question is, now that I have a pot size jam on the turn, do I jam all of it in now or do I bet half on the turn, you know, maybe 40% on the turn and then the rest of the stack jamming in on the river. But with the flush draw on the flop and the potential to double up through a jack from my opponent, I decide to jam it all in right now on the turn. That's what I do. I go all in for 10K. He doesn't think too long before making the fold. So now I have 18 bigs and feel super rich. I open queen 10 of diamonds to 2000 from the low jack. Get the bad news as the hijack jams his tiny stack. I think he had nine <laughs> blinds total with uh, queen 10 suited and only seven more blinds to call. We have enough equity versus whatever he jams. We gotta make this call. So I stick it in. He had 9,100 total and he flips over ace three of clubs. So queen 10 versus ace three. Let's see how it shakes out. <laughs> ah, so after a glimmer of hope on the flop, I lose the run out and hand over the nine big blinds. We're back to all inner fold mode. And the very next hand, I find my spot. I pick up king, queen, under the gun one. I have 8,900, shove it all in there. The small blind makes the call. He's the guy that had the jacks earlier and he flips over pocket sevens and tells me that I owe him one, <laughs> which, you know, fair enough. We're looking to win this flip to get back in the mix. Ooh. Last one, so. Now I know more. <laughs> nice to win your flips. <laughs> so it's a new level. I'm in the big blind with 15,000 in chips at 1,200 big blind. It folds around to the small blind who jams it all in and we sweat out our cards. I see an ace and I stick in the rest of the money. We have ace eight offsuit and up against king five. And for the first time since the start of the tournament, I'm over starting stack. I feel like I should be celebrating, but I rack up, we're moving tables. There's about eight minutes till dinner break and I'm feeling really hopeful. So the last hand before dinner break, I pick up pocket jacks under the gun off 25 big blinds and I am doing cartwheels in my head. So excited. Finally, momentum has shifted my way. Open it up to 2,500 and folds around to the button. Don't know anything about this player because I've just moved here, but he really quickly makes it 10,000. So he three bets a pretty large sizing. Both blinds get out of the way. Now it's on to me. I have to decide to go with this hand or not because with 30,000 in my stack, I'm not gonna just call and be out of position for the rest of the hand. I wanna either get it in with my 25 bigs or fold if I think that he's doing this with a much stronger range than Jax. I decide to go with it. Jax is really strong and I only have 25 bigs. Plus there's more day ones. <laughs> that definitely uh, played a part in the decision. He snap calls and you guys, after all that building back, our opponent flips over two red aces. Oh, Ugh. But can we get lucky? Let's find out. Unfortunately, my luck ran out. Can't get lucky and spike a jack and I'm out of day one A. But I'm happy to go regroup and take all the lessons that I learned today with me into day one B and C. Well, that was lame. Like I said earlier, this is just day one A of three day ones. Still a lot of chances to build a huge stack. It was, uh, was kind of all over the place today. Tomorrow, won't be making those mistakes. I feel like after a long break, it takes me a little longer than I would like 
to get back in the swing of things. I still feel really rusty and I've been, this is the sixth day in a row I've played. So by tomorrow, I think I'll be sharp, hopefully. Really inspiring, I was playing with my friend Joey Weissman. He was winning every pot, he's got heaps. It feels like he knows every spot and when I play with those types of players, it really inspires me to get back in there, really take my time, really think through every spot and not just default to fold. For having just busted the 1600, a fun event, I do feel fired up because there's a lot more tournaments to come and I really feel like I'm finding the groove. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I have better news for you in the next vlog, but until then, good luck at the tables and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.